We begin tonight with Donald Trump once again making a Trump problem much worse. Today, Donald Trump's John Bolton problem got much worse. No one makes Donald Trump's problems get worse better than Donald Trump. And so today, when he was asked about John Bolton, Donald Trump could not resist taking shots at John Bolton, attacking John Bolton, calling John Bolton not smart. John Bolton resisted responding to Donald Trump's provocation. Well, John Bolton didn't completely resist. He said some very important words. John Bolton said, I will have my say in due course. That was first reported as a text John Bolton sent to The Washington Post, and soon NBC News confirmed those exact words from John Bolton today. I will have my say in due course. It would have been much better for Donald Trump if John Bolton decided to have his say today and get it over with. But on this, at least, John Bolton is much, much smarter than Donald Trump. John Bolton is going to have his say. He is going to respond to the insults that Donald Trump threw at him today. But John Bolton is going to control the timing and the form of his response to Donald Trump. John Bolton has already written one book of memoirs of serving in a Republican presidential administration. Tonight, John Bolton knows that he has in his possession the makings of a book that could outsell any book ever written by a member of a presidential administration and a book that could destroy the Trump re-election campaign. I will have my say in due course. Might due course be, oh, a year from now, in September or October of 2020? at the height of the presidential campaign? Might that be the moment for John Bolton to release his second memoir of service to a president? Might that be when and how John Bolton has his say? And what would that book do to the Trump re-election campaign? Donald Trump should be very, very worried about John Bolton's next book. This is a small, there is a small group of New York literary agents and Washington lawyers who handle books like this. And they would all advise John Bolton to have his say in a book and to maximize the value of that book in the marketplace. John Bolton should say nothing between now and when the book comes out. That means that every day of John Bolton's silence becomes more ominous for the Trump campaign. Every book publisher is going to tell John Bolton that they need the book to come out at the height of the presidential campaign. One of the clues of what would be in such a book was offered to The Washington Post today by a source identified as one of Bolton's allies speaking on the condition of anonymity. And that ally told The Washington Post that Bolton was not surprised by Trump's latest outburst after working alongside him and becoming familiar with his behavior. That is the story that John Bolton has to sell to book publishers, working alongside him and becoming familiar with his behavior. Every detail of that behavior that John Bolton witnessed or heard about. John Bolton is in a position to become the best-selling author ever of an Inside the Trump White House book, and he has enough time to write one and get it published at the height of the presidential campaign. And that book could be worth several million dollars, a life-changing amount of money for John Bolton. And so obviously, if there is anyone working in the Trump White House who actually has Donald Trump's best interests in mind, that person would have told Donald Trump today not to antagonize John Bolton, not to say what he said about John Bolton today. I follow up on your decision yesterday with regard to Mr. Bolton. What led you to decide to part ways? So John is somebody that I actually got along with very well. He made some very big mistakes when he talked about the Libyan model for Kim Jong-un. That was not a good statement to make. You just take a look at what happened with Gaddafi. That was not a good statement to make. And it set us back. And frankly, uh, he wanted to do things not necessarily tougher than me. You know, John's known as a tough guy. He's so tough, he got us into Iraq. And that's tough. And uh, but he's uh, somebody that I actually had a very good relationship with, but he wasn't getting along with people in the administration that I consider very important. And uh, I hope we, we've left in good stead, but maybe we have and maybe we haven't. In Washington, if you think maybe you haven't parted on good terms, you haven't. And, you know, John wasn't in line with what we were doing. And actually, in some cases, he thought it was too tough what we were doing. 
Mr. Tough Guy, you know, you have to go into Iraq. Going into Iraq was something that he felt very strongly about. So we're right now in for over $7 trillion into the Middle East. And I don't say it was his decision. You had a president and you had other people also, but he was very out there, I can tell you, and uh, wanting to have them do it. Yes, that's right. Donald Trump was attacking John Bolton for what John Bolton did and said 16 years ago, which Donald Trump knew about when he hired John Bolton. Donald Trump just couldn't stop attacking John Bolton and even managed to squeeze in a defense of Kim Jong-un while he was attacking John Bolton. But we were set back very badly when John Bolton talked about the Libyan model, and he made a mistake. And as soon as he mentioned that, the Libyan model, what a disaster. Take a look at what happened to Gaddafi with the Libyan model. And he's using that to make a deal with North Korea. And I don't blame Kim Jong-un for what he said after that. And he wanted nothing to do with John Bolton. And that's not a question of being tough. That's a question of being not smart to say something like that. Not smart to say something like that. Donald Trump is surely going to find out that it was not smart to say something like that about John Bolton today. Leading off our discussion now, Rick Stengel, he's a former undersecretary of state in the Obama administration. His memoir of working inside the Obama administration is coming out soon. He is an MSNBC political analyst. Maria Echeveste, the former deputy chief of staff to President Clinton and a lecturer at Berkeley Law School, is with us. And Rick Wilson, a Republican strategist and contributor to The Daily Beast. He's the author of Everything Trump Touches Dies. Uh, Rick Stengel, the, the, the president uh, very clearly doesn't understand what he's dealing with in John Bolton. John Bolton is going to write a book. People in his position write these books. Uh, and this, I, I, it, it sounded like a threat today when John Bolton said, I will have my say in due course. I think that's the title of the book right yeah. there. Um, <laughs> I don't agree with John Bolton about many things, certainly mm -hmm. not about Iraq or Iran. But I certainly agreed with John Bolton when he thought it was an absolutely crazy idea to have the Taliban come to Camp David mm -hmm. and have a negotiation with Donald Trump. What, what he had right was he was willing to speak truth to power and say, some of these ideas are just crazy. They're not within the normative window of what public policy is. And the reason his book will be very good is that he understands how you make foreign policy. And he understands just how far outside the window of acceptable practice Donald Trump is. And that will be what he says when he's having his say. Rick, uh, imagine, if you will, that a John Bolton book comes out a year from now in September as the, uh, as the Trump campaign is chugging along anywhere from 15 to 7 or 8 points behind the Democratic uh, nominee, according to tonight's polling anyway. Uh, John Bolton has, uh, in, in, within his power right now, uh, the ability to just kind of wipe out uh, the Trump campaign uh, were he to time a book with that kind of intention? Well, like, I think John Bolton is, a, is one of these characters who is a rarity in Washington. John doesn't really care about politics, but he does care about security. And you can disagree with his approaches on various things, but the, the guy never one day in his life said, hey, I'm going to do something uh, you know, about Iran or Iraq or anything else because I think it'll be great for me in the election. But he certainly will be conscious of the fact that Trump is going to try to frame himself as this, as this you know, particularly potent deal maker and negotiator and international leader. And I think he's got the chance to, um, to stick the knife in right into Trump's very soft under chin uh, at, right at the right moment if he chooses to do so. And Maria, there's a reason why there's a certain kind of public ritual at these kind of departures. And, and uh, both sides tend to be very complimentary of the other, even if they don't really mean it. And a lot of that has to do with kind of protecting uh, the position in the inevitable memoirs. Well, part of it is that. But it, frankly, there, and this is where, I, as Rick, one of the Ricks said, um, I disagree so much with um, John Bolton, but he has a belief in policy, concerned about the country's security. I think it's misguided, but it's about protecting the institution. And so the fact that Trump didn't understand that 
uh, frankly, for me, the greatest concern is if Bolton, Bolton should be talking right now about what he's seen because he knows how dangerous the world is. And he probably has tremendous insight about how chaotic, both substantively and procedurally, this administration, this president is, and that's dangerous. I feel like he has an obligation to actually start talking right now, but um, perhaps money, <laughs> well, money. Well, and also, uh, Rick Stengel, to go back to the campaign issue, if, if John Bolton has seen how dangerous Donald Trump is, if he believes Donald Trump is dangerous in the presidency, dangerous remaining in the presidency, he's looking at the Democratic candidates. There's not one of them who would have invited the Taliban to Camp David, not one. There isn't one of them who will fall in love with Kim Jong-un, who will exchange love letters with Kim Jong-un, not one. John Bolton has to look at Democratic candidates and say, uh, if he believes what he thinks, that, that uh, the country would be better off in foreign policy terms with one of them. Therefore, the most effective time to speak, the most effective time to unload mm -hmm. is September of 2020 and stop the Trump campaign. Yes, I suspect you're right that he would think any of the Democratic <clears throat> nominees would be better than Donald Trump. But to, to pick up on Maria's point, I, I think he does have an obligation to say something. I mean, Jim Mattis has just come out with a book. Jim Mattis says, I still have the quaint, old-fashioned notion that I shouldn't talk about a president who is in power. Well, that is a quaint notion. But if you're the Secretary of Defense or you're the National Security Advisor and your job is to protect national security and you see the President of the United States, who is meant to protect our national security, being the greatest threat to it, then you do indeed have an obligation to speak out, a moral obligation to speak out. Yeah, uh, Rick Wilson, James Mattis took an oath to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States, not the President of the United States. Uh, and right. it, it is just his own personal notion and, and one possibly obtained uh, through uh, customs in the military uh, that has led him to deliver a book that everyone is just ignoring because he's not telling the story of what the experience was uh, to be working with Donald Trump, to be in the room with Donald Trump. I think one of the great difficulties that we've seen uh, sort of uh, you know, in a second order effect is all these people that he's churned through in the national security side of this equation, they're not leaving because they're not competent. They're leaving because he's not competent. They're leaving because they can't work in a system that is so random, so stochastic, so constantly chaotic, driven by Trump's ego, driven by Trump's impulses, you know, and, and now driven by the fact that Donald Trump is to the left of Bernie Sanders. Donald Trump is to the left of everybody else. This, this whole character of Taliban Trump this week, John Bolton is fired for being insufficiently skeptical or insufficiently favorable to the Taliban and insufficiently favorable to the Iranian mullahs. That's, that's a bizarro world that we're living in. And people who are inside have a responsibility to say the truth. They have a responsibility to speak out. Whether their timing is September or now, they have a responsibility to stand up and say, look, this guy is crazier than you can imagine. He is, his judgment is more, is more dangerous than you can imagine. He is an existential threat to this country. Uh, I got to say that uh, inviting the Taliban to Camp David is not a left or extreme left idea. So you don't get to the left of Bernie Sanders with that <laughs> idea. I mean, it might be a Rand Paul idea. I don't know whose idea it would be, but it, it doesn't live on the <laughs> left side of our politics. That's for sure. I want to go to something uh, that, that's so interesting about what Donald Trump is fixated on. And it's when... Um, John Bolton actually defined what he thought denuclearization meant in terms of North Korea. And he used a definition that was what most people were using at the time. And that is what uh, Donald Trump was finding fault uh, with today when he was talking about the so-called Libya model. It was an exchange on Fox News that John Bolton had. Let's watch that. OK, so let's talk about your position, the U.S. position going in, what the U.S. wants from Kim. Will President Trump insist that Kim give up, ship out all of his nuclear weapons, all of his nuclear fuel, all of his ballistic missiles before the U.S. makes any concessions? Yeah, I think that's what denuclearization means. And we have very much in mind the Libya model from 2003, 2004. Uh, there are obviously differences. The Libyan program was much smaller. Uh, but that was basically the agreement that we made. 
Maria, it seems the problem that John Bolton got in there with Donald Trump is he actually defined denuclearization, which is something Donald Trump refuses to do. Not only did he uh, Trump refuse to do it, he also, in listening to today's comments, he referenced Gaddafi and what happened and sort of focused on the ultimate of what happened in Libya, not really understanding what Bolton was talking about. I think going back to this question of does he Bolton have an, an obligation, I think at this moment, everyone... How much more proof do we need about what is going on? It's sort of you. You would normally, Mattis. You don't un undercut a sitting president because you don't want to weaken the president. But frankly, we have so much evidence of how incompetent this president is. It's almost like someone needs to tell the emperor he has no clothes. That Maria, this is it's time. It's time. Maria, Maria Chaveste, Rick Stengel, Rick Wilson, thank you all for starting us off tonight. Really appreciate that. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on the button below for more from The Last Word and the rest of MSNBC.